Standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. And that is why again today we celebrate the World's Day of Peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E, the 1st of January each year. Since 1968. 1968. So obviously this is the 57th celebration. Pope Paul VI, already in 1967, declared that the 1st of January each year will commemorate a day for us Catholics. As we celebrate Mary's motherhood, we also celebrate the World Day of Peace. Jerusalem, that we just mentioned, itself has no word. Peace. And that is why we need to pray that God's will will reign supreme. That peace will exist in our country, Ghana. There are various parts of Ghana going through turmoil. May God's peace be found there. Anywhere in the world that there must be peace. Peace should be found there by the power of Jesus. Amen. And this year, for the theme for the World Day of Peace, Pope Francis chose artificial intelligence and peace. Artificial intelligence and peace. As we know, what we call AI, a new technology in our world today, you'll be amazed. They can pick my head, put on somebody's body, take my voice, project it onto something, and Pope Francis says, hey, let us be careful that artificial intelligence, if you say artificial, it means it is what? Man, we should be careful that we don't destroy our own selves. And he stresses the point that within the context of education, AI and education, let's be careful. Let us make sure that we follow the traditional means to bring, so that peace can, can you know, can be brought about by the fact that people are engaged in education, advancement of knowledge. Again, he stresses the importance of how we should be careful not to water down our culture, culture, because of AI. <laughs> and the last one, we should also be careful that agriculture, <laughs> agriculture, it's not affected negatively by AI. Because what you eat is also what? Very, 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 very important. So we pray that artificial intelligence, why not? It's good. There are always good sides of everything. The good aspects of AI will penetrate into our world and bring peace, tremendous peace. Amen. Again today, we celebrate the solemnity of Mary, the mother of God. And I remember in my secondary school days, this was a whole issue. That why are we Catholics 
giving Mary a title. How can Mary be the mother of who? Of God. And even some of us Catholics still have issues with it. How can Mary become the mother of God? But when you read the gospel according to Luke, we read part today, the first chapter. Victoria, you are here. Come forward. Emil, get ready. Mr. Cossa, get ready. Hubert, get ready. This lady, Victoria, stands in for Mary. Of course, she's older than Mary <laughs> when Mary got pregnant. But young as she was, around 16 years, the angel Gabriel appeared to her and they had a discourse. And I've mentioned, I think we've talked about this on Christmas Day, if you were here, how they talked, uh, a normal, uh, angels appear, they manifest as human beings when they come on earth. So they speak, hail. Mary said, ah, now what's your What else is? So you're going to you give back to say, ah, but how can I? I don't know any man. Hmm? So the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And if you remember, every year, 25th March, we celebrate what? Hey. <laughs> don't worry. We celebrate that it is normally in Lent, but that day, if you observe, we put on white. We sing Gloria. And even the fast, we are dispensed, 25th March. Because that is the day the angel Gabriel announced the solemnity of the Annunciation. Nine months from then, we celebrate what? Fantastic. I hope you remember. That was the day, the word, the eternal word. Mr. Kosa, please come. You are God. Mr. Kosa is an Anglican, but today he's with us. <laughs> Senior Anglican, a word. God the Father. <laughs> he has existed since time. Even before time, outside time, God the Son, Hubert, come. God the Son, small. He is the eternal Word. You remember, it was through the Word the world was. I hope you remember. Please get the argument, or else you get lost. The eternal Word. Maybe, what about you say the Holy Spirit? I don't know. With this your beer, unless you are Holy Spirit, come here. <laughs> so, this is the. This overshadowed and gave the opportunity for the eternal <laughs> to enter into the womb. Listen carefully. He entered into the womb, the eternal. He became flesh. In the beginning was the. In the beginning. The word was there. And the word was with. And the word was. He was God. In the fullness of time, he became what? Flesh. And dwelt among us so Mary became the mother of the eternal word becoming flesh listen carefully so Mary is not the mother of the eternal word in himself because the eternal word existed before but when the eternal word by the power of the Holy Spirit became he entered the womb of Mary. And that eternal word was who? He was also God. Please, do you get what I'm saying? So Jesus, when we say Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the eternal word becoming fantastic. That is why today you hear Father Solomon mention the name that after he had been circumcised, they named him what? Jesus. So Mary is mother of Jesus Christ. She is not mother of the eternal word who has been existing before. But when the eternal word became 
man. She was the mother. It is in her womb. She carried. Please, do we get it? Good. So at this point, when the eternal word, who is Jesus? And as I said, who is also God? As we say in the creed, every day, even today we will say, isn't it? She assumed that role, singular role, privilege to be called Mary, the mother of she is mother of God because Jesus is fantastic. Now, Mary is not mother of God because she is the mother of she is not mother of God because she is the mother of because she cannot be the mother of do you know what I'm saying? So when we say Mary is the mother of God, it does not mean that she is the mother of God, the Father. No, it's not possible. She is not the mother of God, the Father. Is she the mother of the Holy Spirit? Is she the mother of the Holy Spirit? No. Let me test this one. Is she the mother of the eternal word? Is she the mother of the eternal word? She is the mother of... Very good. She is the mother of the eternal word becoming... And who is that? Jesus Christ. And therefore, she is the mother of God. Please, do we understand it? Hey, must someone tell us here? Where the man tells us, Jesus Christ now is never him. <laughs> so let us get this very well. When we say Mary is the, and that's sometimes people think of Roman for Muhammad. You don't, it's, it's because they don't understand the incarnation. If you understand the eternal word becoming man, flesh, you will understand the role of the blessed Virgin Mary. Please sit down. Thank you. So all I want us to learn on this day, the church on the first day of January gives us the solemnity of the motherhood of Mary and all I can tell you here in St. James the picture of the star of the sea let Mary be your star at sea this year we are all on a journey Pope John's our motto is Bella Damus we set sail you know so we are on a journey. We are setting sail. Those days, on the, on the ship, on the sea. And as we sing all the time, will your anchor hold in the... in the... when the sea becomes tough. When you even try to stop as a ship. <laughs> when you try to make meaning to your life. January, let's say we prayed, you had targets. January, February, March, April, May, when things become tougher than you expect. Hey, when the tides are high, when the clouds have covered almost everything and you cannot see in and out. If you want to get to her son, just as she did in John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. Let Mary be your star. I hope you have heard it before. Our Lady, star of the sea. So that when things get rough and you are almost lost, when you see that star, Stella Maris, when you see that star, you can proceed and follow that star in order for you to get to her son mary has no power without jesus christ she's no one she's just like us but for the fact that she's the mother of who of god she's the mother of jesus christ she will surely 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 she can't disappoint you she will surely lead you to her son and that is why here in saint james since the first Sunday of Advent, the oldest prayer, as it is said, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, we say it after Mass. I hope you are aware. We fly to thy. Uh huh. Don't take this prayer as a joke. 
she will surely lead you to her son and it will surely be well with you amen i pray that the words of the book of numbers on this first day of the year will be yours the lord said to moses speak to aaron and his sons and tell them this is how you shall bless the israelites and here we are as the new israel the lord bless you and keep you amen the lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you amen the lord look upon you kindly and give you peace amen and may you never never ever lack any blessing no matter the storms in the year 2024 let us have hope she who went through pain had a sword pierced through her heart the blessed virgin mary she knows what you are going through and she will surely direct you and lead you to her son even if the hour has not come john chapter 2 should serve as an example jesus will surely do it for you once once it is good for your soul may the name of the lord be praised now and forever amen